You're watching CES Live, powered by Ustream.tv, the most powerful way to stream live video. And by Utech, makers of the TriCaster family of broadcast and streaming systems. And now, CES Live. Hey guys, welcome back to CES Live 2015. I'm Callie Lewis. This is Jill from Tom's Guide. Hello. <laughs> now, Jill, you've been doing reporting for a very long time. A couple years now. A couple yeah. years. Okay. Well, that, in technology, that is a very long time because it moves so fast. <laughs> <laughs> um, at CES is the spot to see everything that we're going to kind of yep. see what's happening over the, the course of the year, yeah. right? I've been on the show floor. How, how long? Have, how much have you gotten to see? I've seen, I've been between here and the other big expo. There are two enormous expo halls, and I've been running between both of them. Yes. Mostly looking at all the 3D printing stuff. It's a lot of it is in the other one, the Sands Expo. Yeah, the Sands and is like big this year. Oh, it's huge. I got, the first time I walked in there, I lost all sense of direction. I had no idea which way I was going. <laughs> right. The 3D printing section is actually bigger than ever, too. There's a huge section there, all the different is. printers, a lot of new printers, a lot of new. Uh, accessories, materials, lots of really cool stuff. Which is what we're going to talk about for the next hour or so with you guys. So get your questions ready. We're watching the chat room. But right now we have 3 dpn Limited and John is joining us. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. How are you? Good. How are you doing? We're doing good. My feet are hurting. Uh, sure. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, there. I walked the show floor. I, I'm going to admit it. I walked in on Monday, saw 3DP out there. I was like, ooh. What are they doing? It looked, you guys have a really nice booth. And then I went back when you were all set up um, and everything was looking really good. Lots and lots of 3D stuff going on this year. What is 3DP a focus on? Well, the big story is just big. Uh, <laughs> 3DP Unlimited uh, allows people to go ahead and print things to scale. There are many printers that are good for doing like a desktop size object, maybe mm -hmm. eight inches by eight inches. Mm -hmm. Imagine being able to print something the size of a table, mm -hmm. being able to go ahead and print something the size of a chair, or in the industrial world, you know, something full scale, wearables, okay, yeah. without having to go ahead and stitch together lots of little pieces. Yeah. But do it affordably. Uh, Wait, okay, you're saying I could have a large format printer like in my home for afford affordably? Well, it, it's kind of interesting. The machines are perhaps more expensive than a consumer would be able sure. to use. But maybe you've seen some of these people who do like the bobbleheads with you know my head on George Clooney's body. <laughs> my wife's hoping for that. <laughs> um, but in, instead of doing it as a little doll, imagine doing it to scale. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you start talking about the trends in the industry, there certainly is a trend toward what I would call personalization or customization. Yeah. There's nice things like, uh, you know, imagine you had a child who had uh, uh, scoliosis where their back isn't yeah. straight, but imagine being able to get a brace that was custom to them. Yeah. Okay? Those are examples well, of where... Well, traditionally, something to that effect, you would have to hire a company to do it, and you would have to yeah. retrofit it, and it would be... I, I would expect it would be very, very expensive for a custom fit brace. Oh, yeah. actually, compared to the traditional ways of doing it, this is lowering those thresholds dramatically. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah, and and so whether it's to go ahead and help people do better designs, you know, there uh, maybe an example would be something that looks right in the dollhouse, doesn't look right in your living room. So imagine somebody wanting to go ahead and do a design and validate it, get feedback from customers, okay, and and doing it to scale. So that's, cool. that's classic uh, engineering prototyping, but then there's a lot that's going on in the whole world of, of graphics. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's movies that are being made now, uh, but, but instead of little micro things, imagine being able to do full landscapes that make it even better. Are you printing uh, movie props and things like that? Absolutely. That is super cool. Describe some of them. Well, uh, an example, uh, we just did a, a time lapse that people can see on the website. Imagine making a Frankenstein head that's literally three foot tall by two foot wide, okay? It was a lot of fun, kind of a Halloween-esque <laughs> type of theme. That's but, awesome. uh, but people are doing that uh, with point of purchase displays, people are doing it with, uh, you know, quite honestly, something targeted toward the individual. Mm -hmm. Literally the, the world of customizing an outfit for you, uh, there's a lot of trends toward your shoes your uh, outfit. So do you sell the printers or do you also take orders from people to print on your on the large printers? We are in the business of selling the printers, okay. but uh, clearly we're working through uh, what the industry calls service bureaus who have skills to go ahead and choose the right technologies 
do uh, secondary processing, painting, et cetera, mm -hmm. to even give it more pop. Yeah, okay. So with the commoditization that we're seeing happening already in the world of 3D printing, uh, obviously you're taking what used to, processes that used to be extremely expensive and difficult to do, like the scoliosis brace example, mm -hmm. for yeah. example, um, and, and, and the whole world is, is is becoming commoditized. Um, things like large-scale printers. I mean, your your printers are how large exactly? Because uh, I'm going to do it in in U.S. Uh, okay. measure. Okay, uh, go for it. It would be roughly three foot by three foot by twenty inches is okay. how big you can okay. print. Okay. 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 And so then. That's something, yes, that's a little larger than the desktop. Oh, oh about 75 times. That's right. <laughs> Do you have anything that you printed on one of these printers? Oh, I have, in, your house? Uh, uh, in my house? Yeah, what do you uh, use? <laughs> not yet, but my wife's okay. looking for that Clooney uh, ah, figure. Ah, I see. <laughs> uh, but but well, not, uh, not in my house. What do you think about even the larger scale you know, printers and, and the idea of, of having all of these different sizes? Will we see a day that, uh, that we have access as a consumer to even the larger ones? Certainly, I mean, there's actually some content on, on videos, people printing homes, people mm -hmm. printing cars. In China and that happened, yeah. there's a company that uh -huh. prints homes in China, yeah, yeah. exactly. But what's kind of interesting in our space, uh, a, a comparison, so much focus has been on these little personal printers that might be in your home, right? but because of the limit of size, okay, th there's applications that people can solve. So as an example, People are, are, are quite honestly just doing things that unless you had a quarter million dollars or more, you couldn't do. And mm -hmm. to frame it for you, the type of machine that we're offering is less than $20,000, okay. which a consumer might not buy, sure. but allows much broader access for people who are providing services yeah. to consumers. Sure. So, uh, What kind of materials is it print on? Well, typically it's polymers, but okay. people think of plastic as being right. hard. I, I saw you throwing around your phone a minute ago. But imagine the the inventions in materials are tremendous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are materials that, uh, one is called NinjaFlex, that bends and twists like, uh, actually some companies use it to design tennis shoes and athletic shoes. Then there's materials that print with copper in them, mm -hmm. materials with wood, so that if you sand it, it smells like a nice piece of furniture. Yeah, I've seen a uh, couple of wood-based materials so far at CES yes. here. It looks really great. It really but, but does. it's exploding. Uh, you know, every day there's more, and it's and just opening possibilities. And yeah. being able to print in the same machine with multiple uh, yes. types of material. Uh, is, right. that a, is that somewhere you guys are heading in the future? Well, that's actually something we do. You already do? Yes. Fantastic. So, so you can do multiple materials in one, one piece? Yes, so it could be either different colors or something that's uh, stiff for one part of the, the print yeah. and, and something soft softer. for the other part. With copper, could you do electronics as well? Uh, that's it, coming. As okay. a matter of fact, there's <laughs> some some very good technology that's going to become uh, commonplace. When? Very cool. Come on, uh, give me a date. I, yeah. I, actually, March 2015? Uh, I, I think <laughs> you're going to see it commercialized <laughs> within the next three months. Wow. There's wow. companies starting to do it. Yeah. Nice. It's great. Yeah. And do did I see something on my notes about it being open sourced? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Uh, we've all seen the phenomenon. I'm going to choose Android, okay. and I'm not picking on anybody. <laughs> but uh, you know, what it's done is it's uh, opened up the development community to go ahead and add tremendous value. In our case, we have a machine that's open platform, meaning people are developing software to enhance it, a la yeah. the Android analogy, and people are developing materials. The people who develop the best materials are companies who hire chemists, material scientists, Okay, and they tend to work for you know companies like G Plastics, BASF, right. uh, and and I'd rather leverage their their know-how than you know think that I could do it better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sure. coming on and sharing your knowledge about the industry as a whole, and also informing us a little bit about 3DP. That's, I, That's like great. I said, I saw your booth and I was really interested to hear more, so well, thank well, you. Coming by and uh, we'll get you guys figuring. Uh, so look at the oh, end of the day where I can just print furniture and dishes. And yes. <laughs> clothing. It's <everything>. planned. <laughs> where can people go to find out more? Uh, if you were to go to uh, www.3dpunlimited.com. Perfect. Okay, well, 3DP thank Unlimited. You. Thank Great. you so much, John. Thanks. Thank you. You guys, thank you for watching and for hanging out and asking questions in the chat room. I see the boot in 2001 and others asking questions. Uh, CES Live coverage 
all day, every day here at CES. Geekbeat.tv slash CES Live is where you find all the uh, posts from Tom's Guide, from mm -hmm. Mobile Nations, from Geekbeat, all of us combined. More than you can possibly even read, <laughs> I think. Maybe not. Maybe you're superhuman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Callie Lewis. I'm Jill Shar. Bye.